Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Justin Haskins Show. My name is Justin Haskins. Thank you for joining. Today, we're going to be talking about polls, the 2024 election, Donald Trump, Kamala Harris. Who is going to win? I think there's a really, really clear answer to that. I think the polls show it. I think the mainstream media doesn't want to tell you what these polls are actually saying when you when you put them in the proper historical context. But before we get into all of the details about that, a quick call to action. Please like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in Topics like this, polls, politics, current events, you want to find out about the biggest stories in America before anybody else is talking about them. Stories like the Great Reset, stories like the Green New Deal, stories like uh, this crazy thing that's happening in Europe, where Europe is actually trying to force America to completely transform its economy. This is the channel for you. Subscribe to the channel. Help it out. It's still a fairly new channel. All of your support goes a long way. It doesn't cost you any money at all, just a little bit of your time. All right, let's just dive straight into the topic. Uh, I don't want to um, futz around too much. Um, this, is, this is really incredible. I think that when you actually look at the polling data in a fair, objective way, and you compare it to what's been going on historically, the evidence is crystal clear. Donald Trump, at least based on what we know so far, is easily on track to winning the presidential election in 2024. Easily on track to beat Kamala Harris. Based on everything we've seen so far in polling that we have up to this point in time, as well as polling that we've seen in 20, from 2016 and 2020 other elections involving Donald Trump. Now, I know that sounds like kind of a crazy, you know, uh, uh, claim to make. It sounds like something that only, uh, 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 you know, a MAGA hat wearing, you know, Trump sycophant would say, but just let me, just let me show you the evidence before you dismiss it. Because I really do believe the best evidence indicates that's where we're at, whether you like it or not, that's where the evidence is. So, Here's, here's, I'm going to make my case by showing you polling data from the last presidential election, 2020, Trump versus Biden. And then what I'm going to do is show you polling data for uh, 2024, Trump versus Kamala Harris. And then I'm going to show you how accurate the polls were in 2020 and how, and what that I think means for the polls here in 2024. All right. And a lot of what I'm saying, I'm not going to go into the 2016 polls, but a lot of what I'm saying today applies to 2016, which is a, a, a huge reason why I believe this is the case, because I think in 2016 and in 2020, we saw very similar things happen when you look at the polls and then the actual results. And I think if that pattern continues into 2024, and we have no reason to believe that it won't, Donald Trump is on track easily to win. I think this could be an electoral college landslide. Are you, do you hear me? A landslide in terms of the electoral college. Now I, I could be totally wrong. I'm just basing it on what the evidence shows. All right. So let's first start out with, uh, some evidence from the 2020 general election. Okay. So what I'm showing you comes from real clear politics. Uh, this is a great website, realclearpolitics.com shows you all kinds of different polls from across the country, all different pollsters. They've been doing this for a really long time. It's a great team over there at RCP. Um, and so you can compare polls, not just, you're not just looking at polls from Rasmussen and Reuters, Ipsos, but you're looking at all the polls, all the major polls over a long period of time uh, so that you can see how things are, are uh, treated differently by these different pollsters. And then you can come up with what they call an RCP average. It's an average of the, the various major polls that have been conducted, okay? So this is the 2020 general election, Trump versus Biden. We're looking at the polls that were conducted right before the election actually took place in November 2020. Now, what you see here is um, Biden had a massive, massive lead in the polls going into the election. Uh, he had uh, economist YouGov poll 
for example, had Biden up 10. Um, Investors Business Daily, TIPP poll, Biden up four. Reuters Ipsos, Biden up seven. CNBC change research Biden up 10. The change that that's a Democrat affiliated pollster. That's why they put the D there in the pollster name. Uh, Rasmussen had Biden up one. Quinnipiac, Biden up 11. Biden up seven. Biden up 10. NBC News, Wall Street Journal, Survey USA, Biden up eight. Fox News, Biden up eight. Harvard Harris, Biden up eight. Okay. I think you get the picture here. The Hill, Harris X, Biden up four, Biden up five for Emerson. Like, like the polls were very clear. Biden was going to win big. That's what it looked like, right? When you take all of these, ag- the aggregate, when you take all these polls together, not an aggregate, but an average of all of these polls from October 25th to uh, November 2nd, the RCP average of all these polls showed Biden up uh, 7.2. Okay. You could see this in this gray. If you're watching the uh, YouTube version of the show, the video version of the show, you can see it in gray up here in the top right hand corner, Biden up 7.2. All right. Now in reality, what happened was Biden won by 4.5. All right. But the polls showed Biden winning by 7.2. Now in reality, what the polls show on a national level is not totally irrelevant, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is what polls are showing in the key battleground states because we have an electoral college system. And so it's not about who gets the most votes nationally as much as Democrats want it to be about that. The issue is, did you get enough electoral college votes to win um, to win the race, to get to 270, right? So um, when you look at the battleground states, which we're going to do in a little bit, you'll see that Biden wasn't winning by 7.2 in those key battleground states, but he was still winning in a lot of these states. So just keep that number in mind. 7.2 points, that was the average of the polls going into election day for Joe Biden against Donald Trump in 2020. Now let's take a look at 2024 national polls Trump versus Harris. What we have so far right now is from 919 to uh that's September 19th to October 9th. These are the most recent polls that I have available for me right now. We have uh, a average of Harris winning by 2 points. Okay? So in 2020, Joe Biden winning by 7.2 points. 2024, Harris winning by 2 points. And when you look at the polls, you can see in the individual polls that the differences are are huge, okay? Rasmussen reports uh, uh, a poll from October 3rd to October 9th, 2,244 likely voters, a massive poll, has Trump up two. Reuters Ipsos, uh, October 4th to October 7th, has Harris up two. A morning consult has Harris up five. Yahoo News has it as a tie. Uh, I and I TIPP poll has Harris up three. New York Times, Siena has Harris up three. Emerson has Harris up one. NPR, PBS, Marist, Harris up two. New York Post, Harris up four. Susquehanna, Harris up five. Quinnipiac, it's a tie. CNN, Harris up one. Notice that you have a lot of left-wing outlets saying that it's really, really close. Okay, and you have a lot of, and you have some right-leaning outlets saying uh, Harris actually has a bigger lead than we think. Some right-leaning outlets say actually no, Trump is doing better. But it's it's not ideological here. You have, um, you generally speaking have most pollsters agreeing that the it's somewhere around two for Harris, maybe three for Harris. Trump, it could be a tie. It's all within roughly the margin of error. The margin of error on these polls is about 3%, three percentage points. So three percentage points means Trump, if it's a tie, it means Trump could either be winning by three or Trump could be losing to Harris by three. That's plus minus three, right? And a lot of these polls have a margin of error of around three. So this is much, much closer. Let me bring back up the 2020 numbers for you. Look at the 2020 numbers compared to the to what we just talked about in 2024. 
Biden up 10, Biden up 4, Biden up 7, Biden up 10, Biden up 1, Biden up 11, Biden up 7, Biden up 10, Biden up 8, 8, 8, 4, 5. These numbers are much bigger than what we're seeing today, where it's Trump up two, Harris up two, Her tied, Harris up three, Harris up three, Harris up five, Harris up one, Harris up two. But it's much, much closer, right? It's much, much closer. Now, you might look at this and say, okay, yeah, I, I, I get it. Trump is doing better than he did, uh, is doing better in 2024 than Trump did in, in 2020, at least at a national level, right? So... That seems like maybe on a national level, Trump isn't going to lose by as much as he lost in 2024. I mean, in 2020, but he's still losing in a lot of these polls. Most of them have it either Harris winning. Most of them have it Harris winning. Some have it as a tie. Only one has Trump winning. So does that mean that Trump's going to, to uh, lose the race? Is it, isn't that what the polls seem to show? My answer would be no. And the reason for that is this. Historically, in 2016 and in 2020, pollsters dramatically overestimated the Democrat vote. They dramatically overestimated the support for the Democrat Party when it came to the presidential election especially. Okay? And my, my thesis is that that same kind of problem is going to exist in this election as well. And so... Donald Trump, even though he lost pretty handedly in the popular vote in 2020, he barely lost. He barely lost the Electoral College vote. It essentially came down to fewer than 50,000 combined votes, not 50,000 per state, but 50,000 combined votes in three key swing states, Arizona, Wisconsin, and Georgia. If Trump had won those three states, which he lost again by a combined total of fewer than 50,000 votes, Trump would have won the election. Okay, Trump would have ended up winning. He would be president right now if he had just gotten 50,000 more votes across those three states. All right, so the election was actually really close, even though the polls showed, We'll go back to the 2020 results here on the screen. Even though the polls showed that Biden was winning by 7.2 going into election day, in reality, it came down to 50,000 votes. Well, now the polls show that Harris is only winning by two compared to 7.2. Now that looks really good for Trump. But again, these are national polls. So we have to look beyond national polls and look at battlegrounds. Now, my thesis is that in battleground states, um, the problem that I identified before with pollsters uh, overestimating support for Democrat candidates, that that problem existed in most battleground states as well in the last two presidential elections. And therefore, it's reasonable to expect that it's going to happen in this election as well. So let's take a look at the battleground state polls only for the 2020 election. I'm going to pull those up right here. Okay. So uh, the, the, the text might be a little small on your screen. I apologize if that's the case, but um, I'll, uh, I'll read them off to you if you, if you can't see it on, on the screen here. So what we have is a, uh, two sort of entries, data entries, for each of the battleground states that are being tracked here by RCP. So these are polls going into election day. Okay, so this isn't just an aggregate over the course of the entire election cycle. This is right at the end, right before election day. Each one has two entries. There's a an entry for a state and the RCP average of the polls, and then there's the actual final results. Okay? And um, over here on the right side, it tracks the difference between the... It shows you the, the comparison between the two. Okay? So, for example, in Pennsylvania, a state where the polls actually did very well at predicting what was going to happen, the average, the RCP average, the Real Clear Politics average of polls going into Election Day showed Biden up 1.2 points, percentage points. The final results showed Biden winning by 1.2 percentage points. So that, in Pennsylvania, the pollsters did really well, okay? 
the pollsters did really well. But in most other states, the pollsters missed. And in every single case, in every single case, the pollsters overestimated how Biden would do. So let's just take a look at some of these. North Carolina, RCP average was Trump winning by 0.2. Trump ended up winning by 1.4. Florida, the polls showed uh, Biden winning by 0.9 in Florida, almost a full point. Trump ended up winning by 3.3. So that polls off by four points. Michigan, and that's well beyond, that's beyond, I should say, the margin of error for a lot of polls. Michigan, RCP average of polls was 4.2 uh, for Biden, 4.2 points advantage for Biden. The actual results showed Biden winning by 2.7 points. Wisconsin, Biden won by 6.7 points in the polls. In reality, he barely won. 0.7 points was the difference, so less than one percentage point. Arizona, 0.9 for Biden. Arizona final results, 0.3 for Biden. Okay, so what you see in these polls in the battleground states is very similar to what we saw at the national level, which makes sense, right? In the battleground states, pollsters overestimated support for Biden. The same thing happened in the polls in 2016. Pollsters, that's why everyone thought Hillary Clinton was going to win, because the polls showed Hillary Clinton winning in all of these states. But then when the actual election results came in, the results showed that the pollsters had uh, given too much support for, showed too much support for Clinton and not enough support for Trump. And Trump ended up winning more states than people thought he would. The same, a very similar kind of thing happened in 2020, although it wasn't as big of a problem. Um, it still was a big problem for them. Not quite as big as 2016, but still a big problem. So now with all that in mind, with all that in mind, so we've got you know 2016 and 2020, the same phenomenon happening at the national level and in the battleground states. Let's go to the battleground states in 2024. What I'm showing you here are battleground uh, numbers, averages of polls up to this point in time as of October 9th, um, for Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Nevada. These are widely considered these seven states to be the key swing states in the 2024 election. These are the states that are going to decide who's president um, in 2025. What you'll notice here is a couple of important things. One, in the seven battleground states, although it's really close, it's essentially a statistical tie in all of these places, Trump has a slight edge in five out of the seven. The biggest margin of victory in the polls for Harris is in Nevada, which has Harris up by just one point. In Wisconsin, Harris up 0.4 points. But in all the other states, Trump is winning by less than a point. Okay, so it's really, really close. It's essentially a tie. But my theory is this. If the same phenomenon happens that we saw in 2016 and in 2020, and it happens again in 2024, Trump will easily win. Because in order for the Democrat candidate to win against Trump, they have to be polling more than just one point or two points or three points ahead. They have to be polling by significantly more than that because the polls are not doing a very good job of capturing support for Trump. And so we see the same we see the same kind of thing happening here in in 2024, right? I think we could see the same thing happening. And if it does, it means Trump's going to win in an absolute blowout. At least in terms of the electoral college, not the popular vote necessarily, but in terms of the electoral college, an absolute blowout. So if we scroll down and we take a look, this this chart here, if you're watching uh, the, the the video version, you it's a, it's a electoral college map. Um, you can see it here on the screen. Um, take a look at the one that's on the right hand side here. A electoral college map, no toss up states. This is what the the electoral college results are showing right now. Okay, this is what they're showing right now, based on the numbers that are up here at the top of the screen.
these battleground averages. And what you see is Trump winning in an electoral college landslide, 296 to 242. And really, if my theory is correct, and Trump really should get like maybe a point or two points or more than two points even boost in all of these swing states, then then actually Harris is going to lose in Nevada and Wisconsin as well. And you can add those uh, six electoral college votes for Nevada and uh, 10 for Wisconsin, so 16 to Trump Vance, which would bring you like three, tw- uh, what, like 312 electoral college votes or so and reduce Harris Waltz by 16. So we're talking about a huge, huge electoral college landslide. If my theory holds, if the same thing that happens in the polls in 2016 and in 2020 happens again in 2024, we have the same sort of problem of the polls not doing a good job of capturing Trump voters, then Trump's easily going to win. So if you're Kamala Harris, if you're a Kamala Harris supporter and you're looking at the the polls, you know, you should be nervous at baseline because the polls are showing it as essentially a tie with a slight edge to Trump. You shouldn't feel good about a two-point lead nationally on average, but you really shouldn't feel good about a uh, slight edge for Trump in the battleground states, which are really the the places where this whole thing is going to be decided anyway. And I think I think there's a lot of people who are nervous, and I get it. There's a lot of people out there who are nervous, Republicans, conservatives, they're nervous about what's going to happen in the election. Um, they're concerned that that it's not, you know, that momentum, Kamala Harris has got a lot of momentum and um, she's doing a lot better than Joe Biden did. And she's a terrible candidate, but the media is being incredibly biased. And all of that is fair. All of that is completely and totally fair. But I actually think there is great, there is, there, there is sig- a significant reason, great evidence to feel optimistic if you want Donald Trump to win and you want Kamala Harris to lose. Because if history repeats itself and, and the, in 20 and we see in 2024 what we saw in 2016 and 2020 it is obvious that Trump is going to win in a landslide right now obvious that Trump will win in an electoral college landslide now i'm not saying that i have a crystal ball and that that's definitely what's going to happen maybe this time the pollsters get it right and Trump barely wins uh maybe the pollsters get it wrong in and in favor of they're getting it wrong in favor of Trump and actually Harris is doing a lot better than people think that would be a first tip that would be a first something we haven't seen in a long long time not a first in history but a first in in recent history pollsters tend to favor the democrat for whatever reason that's what they, that's what tends to happen so if if I'm a Kamala Harris supporter, I would be really nervous. If I'm supporting Donald Trump, I would be feeling really great right now. Really great because the best evidence shows Trump is seemingly on track to win. We're going to keep a close eye on this um, for the remainder of the election season. We're going to be providing some updates going forward. If you're interested in seeing more updates and how things are shaking out, what the election looks like, um, then uh, please subscribe to the channel, like this video so that other people will see it and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Do you think that Donald Trump's on track to win? Do you feel optimistic about things? Do you feel pessimistic? Maybe you're a Kamala Harris supporter. Um, What do you think? How do you feel about the election? Let me know in the comments section. I don't respond to all the comments or even most of the comments, but I do read all the comments. So I really appreciate everyone who takes the time to write in into the comments section. I greatly appreciate it. So keep your head up. Uh, I think things, if you're a Trump supporter, looks pretty good right now. Keep your head up. Don't get discouraged. Don't be discouraged by the biased media. Things are looking pretty good. And until next time, I'm Justin Haskins. Thanks for watching the show. Uh, Stay free.